way out. You may have heard of the tough new assessments for people claiming disability benefits. The truth is, these are mock assessments that the government is carrying out via ATOS, which ignore our disabilities and focus on whether we can walk 20 metres, push a button and sit in a chair. We are fighting to ensure that they conduct real assessments instead. It has been successfully argued in court that the DWP should make reasonable adjustments to the work capability assessment process in order to make it fit for purpose, as is required of them by the Equalities Act 2010. Today the court is hearing about what reasonable adjustments, if any, the DWP proposed to make. Disabled people in our hundreds of thousands are being found fit for work which simply doesn't exist, taking no account of the discrimination and the prejudice towards disabled people exhibited by employers. At the same time, cuts in our public services are meaning that more and more disabled people are being about pushed out of work. I've worked all my life and then I, coming up to retirement, I come down with a chronic illness that makes it impossible for me to work. Why do I have to prove this over and over again? I've had to go through two tribunals, both of which have ruled in my favour, and I've been put back on the benefit. Every time my benefit is reduced to the appeal level, somehow I'm supposed to survive on that. I get into debt, I get my benefit reinstated. It's a bloody nightmare. I never know where I am financially. And now, once again, I've had an assessment, this time, coincidentally, I had a visible illness. Normally my illness is invisible because I've actually fractured my ankles. It seems that suddenly it's been recognised that I can't work. I've been put in the support group all of a sudden, just like magic. DWT, hear us say, brutal work test, no way! DWP, hear us say, brutal work test, no way! The government do not want to assess us on the basis of medical evidence from our doctors and the other healthcare professionals who treat us. If they had to look at the medical evidence, the majority of us would and do qualify for disability benefits. The courts have already found that the work capability assessment places people with mental health problems at a substantial disadvantage by failing to ensure that we are able to submit further medical evidence. An overwhelming number of people have suffered a serious deterioration in their mental health, requiring further National Health Service treatment, including hospital admissions, who have had to increase their medication as a result of going through this cruel and iniquitous process. There are people whose health has deteriorated because of the constant reassessments of the work capability assessments handed by the DWP. People who've had their decisions found fit for work, terrified. People like my friends, like Colin, like Carol, who jumped to their deaths who left behind young families. I've lost 18 of my friends to the work capability assessment. They're dead. We remember Linda Wooten from Essex, a transplant patient who died nine days after being found fit for work and on her hospital bed was having to fill in a form a week before she died. Two years ago we knew 76 people a week were taking their own lives where the work capability assessments had been found by coroners to have been a contributing factor. Since then the DWP has simply refused to issue any more statistics. And I tell you this, Ian Duncan Smith, you will be held to account for the crimes you have committed against disabled people. You have committed crimes against humanity. We will make sure you are brought to justice for the deaths of disabled people who have died in the last four years due to this cruel and callous process. And I say to members of the public right now that any one of you
you can become sick. Any one of you can develop a disability. You could lose your job, have a breakdown at your desk. It can happen to you. We call for a scrapping of the work capability assessment. We call for a system that seeks to help people, that seeks to give them opportunities for rehabilitation and for treatment so that they can get better and engage in the society. And our solidarity and our love is with the family and friends who have lost loved ones due to this cruel, cruel and callous process. I ask you to please observe a minute of silence for all of those who have lost their lives to this process and may they rest in peace.